All right, so I got all the stuff I need to get the direct drive steering set up. You're gonna wanna have a servo. You're gonna wanna have a radio and a way to power it all on. All right, let's get right into it. I got a whole manual right here to show step by step, and we're gonna get right into it. I have the whole kit for the Shark direct drive front steering here. I've got the chassis that it'll be going on at some point in the next few minutes. I'm gonna get this out of the way though for now, and we will start opening up this box. I also have my my servo, and it's all centered, so that is a key point, is make sure you center the servo before installing it all, because it'll just make it easier down the road. All right, let's start taking apart what's inside of this package. On this top half, you get your two carbon arms that are gonna be the supports for the whole thing. And then you break into your Aluminum section that will go for your steering. There are a couple. There's a couple different options too for um, additions on these. All right. So in the manual to get started, we're going to start by installing. Put this on here. Putting the servo plates, the mounting brackets, onto the servo itself with washers and spacers here. I'm gonna go with a four mil spacer on each one to give it a four mil space and we'll go from there. So let's start working on it. Servo's gonna go upside down. Servo's a little tricky because the wire is gonna go in the front like so. You're gonna wanna wrap it around like that while working on it at least. And once you install it, it's also the proper way to install it. Here, this block is going to go like so, and we need to just start breaking out some screws. Just get a couple longer ones. See how far we get with this four mil spacer and this screw, and see if I need to get a longer one or not. Take this here. Screw goes on top. Washer goes between it. And this will go into here. What's the proper direction? It looks like the shorter side with less on the other side of that hole will go here, according to the manual. Like so. Get the next one. Make sure it's all straight. There's no real guide here it kind of just presses in so you got to kind of make sure it's all aligned where you want it that's the rear now the front this one actually goes on top like so it does not go underneath the screws are actually going to come from underneath into it if that makes sense, I hope it does. And that's the front of the servo that this block goes on to, like so. Get our next screw. The other side. Now this is what's gonna give it the angle that helps you with some of the angle when you turn and it, the suspension works up and down, it'll get less, you'll have less kick out when you're in, when your suspension's compressed. All right, so that's that for now. Done with that step, On to the next page. This is where we add the servo horn and the actual ball studs to this little wing that gives it its angles. So we're gonna need the servo horn. We're gonna need this. And I'm gonna need my ball studs from the kit that I'm building. Get those over here. Anything that's metal on metal, you're gonna to wanna to put a little thread lock on. 
just to be safe. So now this, let's figure out how this goes. Skip a little bit. We're actually going to start by installing this. Like so. So let's do that. That goes like that. This goes upside down like so. This is going to slide on like so. And you're going to do a screw in the front and the rear. These ones that are included. Now these are hard to get to, so if you're going to Loctite, do it now. Or you might kick yourself when you lose one on the track. Not too bad. It's a little long. Let me see if I can find some shorter ones to clean that up a little bit. No, looks like that's perfect. That's going to be the right one. The other one now. I'm running out of Loctite, so I gotta get it where I can. Don't do me like that. Okay, get this one installed on the front. Pictures it shows this is all the way pressed forward, so I'm just gonna do it like that. We'll tighten it up. So. Now this is just about ready to install to the actual servo itself. But first we're going to need to install our ball studs for our steering linkage. Okay, double checking my car. I also have very long ones underneath and there's no issues with that. So we're going to keep it the same. Kind of goes together. All right, let's get this other one installed since it is correct. We're going to move on to the next stage, which will be installing the arm. This is why you need to have it at a point where it is centered and you're sure that it's centered because once you put it on, you want it to be as good as possible. Now you can go into your trim and adjust that a bit, but I'd probably rather not do that. So this is as close as it's gonna get with this servo arm and the way it locks in. I'm gonna grab another short, probably eight mil screw. And I'm gonna lock this arm down. It's a little lock tight because these can come out. We're locking the servo horn in. As you can see, you add a second one across. That one, it's gonna be a longer one. Probably this one. A little Loctite on there as well. Tighten that on to there. And that should make sure nothing goes anywhere. Actually, that's very tight. It's a little bit different than my first Shark as well, the first direct drive steering system I had. That one, this one has teeth cut into the servo horn, so you're gonna either kill your servo or you're just gonna strip out plastic. The other one actually is made to kind of be a servo saver, but after a while it gets old and doesn't work as well. So I'm actually excited to use this because it's not that often that you're hitting walls and stuff. At least it shouldn't be. If it is, then hey, it happens. Now we're on to this next part where we add these small inserts that are actually where your carbon's gonna lock onto the sides of. All right, let's get to this next step. We're gonna be taking these smaller screws right here. I don't know if you can see that or not. It's real tiny. Those will be going into let's see here. So now there are four of these. They're a little small, so don't lose them. Just 
rock them. <laughs> Very easy. Okay, those are in. Make sure they're snug. Page. All right. Next, we're going to be installing the rear bracket onto the chassis and this front bracket here as well, which is then going to attach to this. So, let's do that real quick. Luckily, they give us all of the flathead screws to go underneath the chassis, which is very nice. I need four of them. You're going to need your chassis. Here, you're going to need this block. Get them started. should be the proper location of that one. Now we're going to need this block here. It goes, aims forward off the front two. It's a very cool, interesting location. Yeah, that goes right behind the front arms, the front toe block at least, and aims forwards towards the front of the car. Like so. There we go, it's all snugged up. All right. Now the next step after that, done that. Next step involves setting up these blocks onto the carbon. Going through. So we'll take those like this and this, grab the proper sides of these, the engraved, the countersunk side is actually on the inside. The side with the little ticks will be on the outside of each, which means this is going to go right through here. Into this little slot here, like so. So if you're looking at it like this, you go right onto the outside. And you will be using more countersunk screws to insert those. Start the screw there, Put this block here, like so. Next one. Let me do the other side real quick. We're about to start assembling the whole system into the car with these outer arms, which go here and here. Come 
little later, a little later. Now I'm going to take this and this like so. And on the next page, it will show us installing it. So, let's get our servo back in the picture. Take this like so. This is now going to go into it like this. As you can see, I'll start one of these screws on this side. I'm going to take the smaller button head and it's actually going to go into this back section where your little chick check marks are. We'll just get that on there lightly. As you can see, that acts like as a little slider for adjustments if you ever want to loosen it and adjust your steering angles and all that. It's part of the reason this car is so cool. It gives you a ton of really unique adjustments that you don't find in other cars. Let's grab some more flatheads that we're going to use to install this with. Need a few of them. This is going to go onto the car here and here. And we'll just start getting it set into place. It's going to be a little bit hard to see, but I will show you. Okay. Flathead one's going to go into here on the other side. You're going to take another to the back end, which is slotted down into that purple mount on the rear. This one. You're going to make sure your servo is set up on there, and then you're going to take this side and start fitting in. Remember that these little metal arms have to go in this channel, so get those in that channel. And then you can get the arm set where you would like it, like so. Now it's just floating there with that. Is almost fully assembled. Get this front in. To hold that together. Get the rear in, and that will be it all together and holding itself in place. This one's down here. Okay, it's all in, snug. Now you're gonna wanna add another screw here on this adjustment side. It's gonna be a small flat head or a small button head. Into this. You can keep that lightly in there so that you can adjust. Now let me show you how that looks. Here's where your adjustment set screw is. Here is the one that just slides and lets you make adjustments forward and backwards and then you would lock this down in order to set that permanently. Here it is starting to come together. We got a little bit more to go, but we're gonna get it all finished up here soon. All right, next we're gonna be putting this top block on. Let's see here, we go like this. Like so.
couple more flat heads. <clears throat> Picked up some new Loctite because I was running out. Alright, we'll do one on this side and then one on the other side. This is adding another point of support for the whole steering system. on this one and see it comes with two I think one works for an RDX if I'm not mistaken we're gonna use the smaller one that has less holes on it for mounting that one can go off to the side this goes now this is for your um, your hinge pins on the top you can set your angle with this as well. It just goes right here. Looks like I can get it in. I gotta move the servo wire a little bit. still so we can adjust. I'm going to go over the top that way it doesn't get caught in anything on the other side of it. All right so those screws are there. Now on the back side of this I'm going to go two button head screws. Actually I think I have that flipped the wrong way. Yeah let me redo that. Where's that? Here we go. Slide this over like so. And we can actually throw the upper arms on while we're doing this in the process after we get these button head screws in. See what sizes we have left still. Ten, or probably eight. Probably the proper one. Yes. Side. Just keep moving through, make sure there's nothing else we're missing. That's the next one. Mm -hmm. Got all that. Oh, we gotta add these to the top now. Flip this back around. We're gonna be putting our screws in up here and here. Those are going to be button head screws.
I'm gonna use shorter ones here. There's that. We did those ones earlier. Okay, now we just need to put the front shock tower on, as well as our suspension pins. Or do we do that? We can do that later, potentially. Let's see. All right, here's a tower. It's going to go on just like so. Since we're here, though, I'm going to put these upper arms on. These front uppers. This should probably be that one. This one will likely be that one. Double check. Nope, they'll be switched like so. And we're going to go left, left. So let's grab our pins that are up here. Oh, forgot about that. Actually, I'm gonna wait to do these because I'm gonna need to see um, what spacers I need to use. Actually, do I have the spacers? A one and a three, a two in the front, and a three millimeter in the rear is what it looks like I have set up. These look like two, two. Probably gonna need more. So let's just get this mounted for now. This front bumper. It's the next step. If you have like uh, anything car if you already like have carbon upgraded stuff already, that's where that would you would throw that on here. And this is almost gonna complete it once until we get the arms on. Everything moves freely. We do have some extra stuff left over, which is not a problem, because I believe that is everything we have to install. So that's gonna be everything on that end. We do need to do the turnbuckle still. We need to make those. Let me find the ones I need, and I'll check back in. Okay, before we get too far, I am gonna insert these pins though, where, they, where I want them to start. And it's gonna be the bottom, bottom lower on the outsides of each. And when I do that, I'm gonna insert the actual screws that are included for it as well that go into the plastic, into the back side of the metal. I'll show you in a second. Get my wrench. It's gonna be a smaller wrench. It's gonna be for these little guys. These much smaller ball head or uh, button head ones. And we're gonna take that. Loctite. And from the back side. Let's see if I get you a better angle. So I'm going to be going into here, the center hole on the back of this hinge pin mount, like so, and I'm going to do it on the other side as well. That's the retaining screw for that pin. You need these, so don't forget these. I know I'm a little bit ahead on the steps because it's not fully built yet, but uh. I'm doing this so I don't forget him. Don't forget either. Okay, those are in. Now there are also two for the front. I believe these. Actually, these are not. These are just extras. The two for the front are somewhere else in a different bag. 
I believe they're right here. Looks like bag 10 if you're working off the kit. Yes, bag 10 has the smaller button heads that fit and will lock into the hinge pin so they don't come out. And we're almost there for the direct drive front steering. I'm working on the turnbuckles next. I'm gonna give you all my measurements, show you where I set up. I'm just gonna set it up like my my first car because that seems to run really well. Um, I can't promise that that's gonna work for all of your setups, but it might be a good place to start. I'm not an expert. I'm just doing my best to learn and help other people do that as well. So let's get into the turnbuckles. Put this off to the side for now. Grab these, grab bag number two from the RD 1.0 kit that has the pre-built turnbuckles in it. I'm just gonna steal the ball ends off of those and put them on these 45 millimeter turnbuckles from Yokomo. Do, do, do. Let's see. All right, let's get these just unspun. <laughs> The kit does come with a turnbuckle wrench, so, or if you have your own, pull that out. You should figure out that you're going the right way. Now these are grooved on one side. I never, I always forget what that means. So we're just gonna do what we can do. All right, so here's one side of it, grab the other side. I don't believe the new turnbuckles I'm using have the, the grooves into them, so we'll just have to figure that one out. Maybe put a little mark on them, that way we know. There's one. It's a little hard on the fingers if you mess up or if they're just stiff, but it does hurt a little bit. So maybe you want to grab a wrench or I know a turnbuckle wrench works pretty good. A shock pliers also. All right. So got these out, get the new ones put in. see the difference in length from the original to the new. Now, like I said, these are included in the kit as well. Just they have a very, very small um, size on them. Well, that's these, let's see, compared to the Yokoma. You can almost, it's just, it's too hard to grab. So I just forego these now that I know. Put them in the extra parts bin. All right, and let's start installing the new ones. We'll just get them started and then I'll take some measurements of my old turnbuckles. Just get it started. Now with these, these are actually a little bit easier to see which way the grooves go because they're not, because they're just cut so clean, you can kind of see. Okay, that's on there now. I can hold this and actually just adjust. And eyeball too, and just crank this one on as much as you want until it looks like your first one. Get close. Get a threads match going that way and that way, so we're gonna put those on them. All right, 
back with some pliers. Figure out the right side again. Easy peasy. All right, do that. If, it, if it's you, do that. Don't be like me. You're gonna hurt yourself. All right, so that is the turnbuckles. Now let's set this actual front section where it's gonna ride inside the chassis. Like I said, again, I'm just gonna copy this. Let's see if you can. All right. It's a little tough, I'm sorry. There you go. It's about the third notch back goes a half notch, a full notch, and it's right on the third, the half notch, the second half notch from the front. So let's set that on here. That's assuming these are all cut the same. We're gonna go right to there. Yep, we're gonna set it right there. And then we're just gonna tighten those screws down. Right here. on the left and the right side of it. Okay. That should be pretty much everything you need to know. Obviously you're gonna have to go in and do some fine adjustments to these ends if your car is set up a little differently. Uh, you might just find that you like it set up differently as well. So play around with it, nothing's wrong as long as it's, you're driving and you're just learning so keep doing that let's get these front wheels straightened out a bit figure out where we want them so with this aligned at center which is how i built it it's going to be i'll have to add a little trim into it but i'm going to keep this purple horn face directly forward and i'm going to adjust the actual you know, toe in, toe out, and get it all figured out that way. I'll use my calipers just to keep it close. Okay, so that's dead centered here and just slightly towed out in the front on this on the right side. So I'm going to try to do that to the left side now. I can already tell the steering angle is starting to come. I can already tell it's starting to get into real, real angle from side to side. Now it's just going to come down to some fine adjustments. Okay, so dead centered. It's coming towards me a little more on this side. That's getting close. I'd say that's very close. Work there. Front's pretty good looking. Crazy angle on that without it all dialed in. That's something once you start getting your electronics set up, some of these endpoints you are gonna set in your gyro which is gonna help you not have issues with binding or anything like that. So 
you can see this is nice and springy. We're gonna keep getting some stuff put into it. Okay, shark number two is complete. We threw the old MST XBL system in there. This car is gonna be run by my girlfriend. We're gonna start with a little bit slower motor so she can get the feel for everything. Paired it up to the Sanwa. There's my car here. Got that paired up to the Futaba in case we want to start doing some testing with some Accuvant stuff down the road or the GYD 550 Gyro. All right, so next we're going to be testing it and getting it all dialed in at the track and we'll see how my girlfriend does.